All right, everybody, we are going to go through 7.4 notes together. You should have your notes out for Unit 7. You should be flipped to 7.4. And I apologize in advance if anything gets way too loud here. You are in a household with multiple loud people. All right, so here is the warm-up you should have already done. It was written on the board today. Um, and if you haven't, just push pause and try to find the oxidation numbers for each element in the compounds below. Use the notes. Push pause now if you need to. I'm just going to keep on going and assume you've already finished and you're not just sitting there copying what I've done. Sodium. Alkali metals are always plus one. And what do we know? Do we know phosphorus or oxygen? Good. Oxygen is minus two. Now guys, here I've got four oxygen, so it's going to give me a total of minus eight, right? And that sodium is a plus one. So over here with these two, I've got negative seven. This all has to balance out to zero, so this phosphorus must be plus seven. Okay, look at the next one. You've got hydrogen, generally plus one. Oxygen, usually minus two, unless, or yeah, usually minus two, period. Now, let's go find the chlorine. Plus one and then minus six, because there's uh, three oxygens. It's going to give you a negative five. So here, chlorine is positive five. This last one's a doozy, guys. There are multiple ways to do this one. I'm just going to show you what we have normally been saying. And we'll leave it at that for this year. Negative 2 for oxygen. Hydrogen's generally plus 1. So here I've got plus 12, minus 12. And then I've got 6 of these. But guys, no matter what this is, these have already canceled out. Carbon should be 0 here, which is very weird. You could have also found it where I believe carbon will give you a plus 4. But... Hydrogen had to be a minus 1 there for that to work out. So there you have minus 12, because there's 6 of these, minus 12 more. So that gives you negative 24 here. And 4 times 6 is positive 24. There were two ways to do this one, guys. Either one is fine, based off the rules I've given you this year. Okay? We're going to keep on going. Stay with me. If this is a review, you can try fast forwarding through the video to get to the next part. Otherwise, just let's keep rolling. First thing I'm going to do is formula mass or molar mass. That's the sum of all atomic masses of all atoms in the formula. Okay. The label is generally AMU. That's probably what you're going to see on most standardized tests. But for me, You'll always see me write it in grams. AMUs are the same as grams because when I think of masses, I think it's going to be measured in grams. And this is what reminds me to look on my green sheet for this information. All right. So we're going to look at these two. Look at CO2. So what we want to start doing here is we just kind of line them up. See, and I've got two oxygens. Go to your green sheet. What's carbon's atomic mass? Well, the atomic mass number for carbon is 12.01, two decimal places, and I've only got one of them, so I'm done. For oxygen, it is 16, but there's two of them. So 2 times 16, which is 32. Rounding again to two decimal places. Then you just add those up, guys. What's the formula mass for CO2? Well, it's 12.01 plus 32. 44.01 grams. Now, that's how many grams are in one mole of carbon dioxide. That's the molar mass of one of carbon dioxide, etc. This next one's a bit of a doozy. We're going to do this one together, so stick with me. Now, here, magnesium is 20, whoopsie, 24.31. Now I've got not just two carbons, but I've got four. 
4 times 12.01. Guys, you can do these either way. If you notice, sometimes I do arrows, sometimes I'll line it up like a math problem. Hydrogen. I've really got 6 because 3 times 2 is 6. Always multiply. And each of those hydrogens oopsie, is 1.01 1 .01 grams. Now oxygen, there's four of those, and each one of those is 16 grams. So you're going to take all of this information and add it up. I'll give you a second, and I'll give you the answer. <clears throat> Your final answer should come out to... 142.41 grams or AMU. Either one would be correct. And that's the molar mass. So when we start using this, this is going to be what we use in our T charts. When it comes to how many grams are in a mole, how many grams are in one mole, that's what you're going to do. You're going to have to go add all this up. Okay? Checking along here. Here's the next part, one reason molar mass is so important is so we know our percent composition of each compound. Later we can do it for mixtures as well. Percent composition is what part of the whole thing is each compound. So what part of this compound is say oxygen or carbon if it's CO2. Here's your general formula that you need to write down. The mass percent Oopsie. The mass percent of an element is the mass of that element in the compound over the total mass of the compound times 100 because it's a percentage. Okay. Mass percent will never, ever, ever, ever change because you'll all, it'll always have to have a certain ratio of atoms, which we're going to talk about in the next lesson. So here, calculate percent composition of each element in the following compounds. Well, guys, we've already done CO2, so just look back at your work on um, 3A. And remember, I need to know the mass of the element in the compound to, to fill this out. So what I'm going to do here, whoopsie, let me just go ahead and pull both these up. I'm going to do this first one here, A. When I do this one, I need the percent composition of carbon. So that's going to be the mass of carbon in the compound. Well, if you look above, carbon is 12.01. There's only one atom or one mole. So it's 12.01 divided by the mass of the whole thing. The mass of CO2 from before, 44.01. And then it's grams. They'll cancel out. You don't really have to worry about that. You divide them and multiply by 100 to get a percentage. And you should have 27.29% carbon. Okay. Mass of the element. Mass of the whole compound times 100. Let's try B. So to find the percentage of oxygen. Well, oxygen is not just by himself. It's not just 16. There are four of them. So when we did that, we did 4 times 16. Came out to, I believe, 64. And it's 64 over the whole mass of the thing, so magnesium acetate was 142.41. Find that and multiply by 100. You should get 44.94. Again guys, stop this if you want to do the problem on your own first and come back. Okay. So that's percent composition from just the formula. That's just regular old percent composition. But what if they don't give you the formula? Sometimes you have to work based off what you're given. What if I just, I don't give you the formula. What if I give you the grams? 
So here, I tell you that we've got magnesium oxide. I've got the mass of the compound. I've got the mass of the oxygen. Now, can you find the percent composition? Well, you can certainly find it of oxygen, right? So what's the mass of oxygen in this compound? 5.40 grams oxygen over the mass of the whole thing. Oopsie. 13.60 grams. Okay. Times 100. Do your math. Push pause if you need a second. Should come out to 37.91% oxygen. And guys, you know magnesium and oxygen are just those two elements, right? Well, if it's 37 or 38% oxygen, what percentage of magnesium is it? All you have to do there is say 100 minus 37.91. That should give you 62.09% magnesium. Okay. Alrighty, that's percent composition in a nutshell, guys. You have a bunch of practice problems on homework set 7-4. So you need to be on homework set 7-4. The first part was molar mass. Go add it all up. Should be in grams. The second part was percent composition. Use your notes. You can work with a partner as long as you're getting things done. I will be looking over these when I return. Good luck.